What's going on, y'all? This is Coach Mike D with another episode of Impact and Fulfillment. Merry, merry, merry Christmas to all. I pray everybody's having an amazing holiday season with family and loved ones. Um, this episode is actually a throwback to my conversation with James Lopez, the founder and creator of Fatherhood is Lit. This is my guy. Um, unfortunately, this was the last recorded episode of our collaboration entitled We Do It For Our Kids. Um, not long after that, um, this conversation, James suffered an unfortunate traumatic brain injury, and he's still in recovery, right? So a lot of prayers out to my guy, him and his family, as he's still recovering and, you know, getting, you know, getting back to where he's supposed to be, you know? And uh, so there's actually a link in the bio to the GoFundMe to support James in his recovery, but, um, but yeah, so prayers out to him and, uh, prayers out to everybody out there during this holiday season. But now without further ado is my conversation with James Lopez, the founder of fatherhood is lit. Welcome to impact and fulfillment with coach Mike D where you'll gain practical wisdom and dynamic insight from amazing conversations to live your best life. Yo, dude, episode six, we do it for Ooh. our kids. We're back. And guess what? We got some heat, don't we? Yeah, man. Episode six. Good dude, Lord, man. Six. Like, geez, it's going quick, huh? Yeah, it's man. It's going well, quick. It, well, you, you think it's quick, but then when you look back over the time, you're like, okay, it really hadn't been that quick, but it's just yeah. all this stuff goes down in life. So, but yeah, man, six, you, you, brother. You know what's crazy <laughs> about... about having episode six to the to the listeners out there mm -hmm. um you and i have these conversations right mm -hmm. and imagine if we would have recorded all our conversations bro we'll, we'll be like at episode 100 right now <laughs> at least at least at least and it'd be so, all kind of stuff man like some, it, some of it might be embarrassing <laughs> uh, but, but you know what though we do it for our kids because we want to show them that we're not superheroes we're people right yeah, we are fallible we screw up we make mistakes we say the wrong thing, but now we have an opportunity to have this discourse, which shows them that, look, all right, daddy might have screwed up on that one, but that doesn't mean I'm not a good daddy. Or yeah. daddy might have screwed up on that. That doesn't mean I'm not a good husband to mommy. But the thing is, we're transparent and we're open and we want them to see the value of that transparency and that being open, that openness. You know, you know it's crazy because we, we titled it, we titled it, we do it for our kids, right? Mm -hmm. But um, in all actuality, even though we do it for our kids, we do it for ourselves and mm -hmm. for the dads out there where, you know, you and I are being transparent on some of the things that you and I talk to talk to each other about on the low. Right. And we're, we're being transparent mm -hmm. where now we can show other dads that, yo, we're not perfect. Like you, you guys might look at us and be like, yo, James and Mike got their shit together. Mm -hmm. Nah, man, we far from that. We are mm -hmm. work in progress, man. Like my man, Will Smith said. <laughs> Ooh, Will Smith, boy. <laughs> That is such a, that's such an interesting, that's a lightning rod. And I think you did that on purpose, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cause he got, <laughs> cause he got triggered. He got triggered. And, and you know, today's conversation, we, we got to take it there, bro. We're we not we're, for the community out there. We're not talking about Will Smith, man. Cause mm -hmm. I, I know, I know you guys are probably tired of all I, the gossip know, sites and all that talking mm -hmm. about it. We're yeah. not passing judgment on the man. We're sure. just saying that he got triggered. Now he got to live with that. Mm -hmm. And it, it relates to something that, that I want to talk about is, you know, parents getting triggered, especially, I know we got a lot of different ways to get triggered, mm -hmm. but yo, when you see the parents get triggered at sport events, man, <laughs> dude, dude, when, when their kids something. are out there, bro, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to throw something else at you there. You know, I'm a parent, you know, with an eight year old and a 10 year old, they play sports and all of that. Yeah. But before I became a parent, I was also a youth coach, right? So I would coach <laughs> youth football and I would coach, you know, youth basketball yeah. and baseball and soccer and all of that. And now I'm doing that, you know, in conjunction with my kids. But dude, I, can, I mean, I got all kinds of stories, you know, getting cussed out by parents and, you know, yeah. not even me getting cussed out as a coach, you know, by the parents of the kids that I'm coaching, but opposing parents or Ooh. then what's even worse, because I can take it is when I would hear a parent cussing out their 10 year old kid over how they were playing on the field. And I mean, it's just like, it's so many things there, but parents get triggered in these types of settings. And, um, and we got to talk about it, man. 
you know, it, it's crazy because, you know, you, you were a coach. I was, I, you know, I was a coach too. This is my first year not coaching basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, and I posed that question to the community. You know, my son had his, uh, his playoff run this weekend and he had um, a championship game and all that. And I, I, I put this question up, which is, yo, I don't know what triggers me more, man. Like what triggers the anxiety? Is it, is it being the coach or sitting on the sideline watching your child play? Yo, mm-hmm. I don't know which one is worse, bro. Because mm-hmm. when I'm a coach, it's like, yo, I, I could scream at them, right? Mm-hmm. And I get caught, I get lost in the moment, right? And and I'm talking to them, but I see it as me being a coach, right? Mm-hmm. When I'm sitting on the sideline, I hear all these parents screaming at their kids, and it's like, oh shit, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Like now that I'm not the coach, I can't really try to over, you know, over scream over over all these parents mm-hmm. to get my message across because I know it doesn't work. <laughs> Dude, you know, what's, you know, what's inter- you know, it's interesting. So, and and I think there's a difference between being triggered and being kind of like a sideline coach, right? Yeah. So I think there, there are two different dynamics and I think it all depends on your relationship with your kid, right? Because yeah. there are some that I know that, okay, my kid is not doing or working up or playing to their potential or their head's not in it and the coach can't get it out of them. But I, as a parent can see that. So maybe from the sideline, I am trying to, you know, add some, some stimulus to say, Hey, look, you know, just man, snap into it, dude, you're doing this or doing that or the thing that I can say to them that would get them kind of back in the game. And it's not just sports. You would do that in academic settings or ballet recitals or whatever it is they're doing. You would be able to do that. If you recognize that your kid is not into it and you're a parent, you see it when someone else maybe won't like I was coaching basketball this past season and it's like eight you. So it's like, you know, seven, six, seven, eight year olds. And one of the, uh, (laughs) the moms came running in the middle of the game, came running around to the sideline and tapped me on the shoulder and said, he has to go to the bathroom. And I'm like, I never noticed it. (laughs) Right. But she was just like the way that he's walking, the way that he's running up and down the court. So we had to call a timeout and get him off the court so that he could. and, and, And she knew, he had to go to the bathroom, right? Yeah. We probably would have just let him pee on the court, not realize. <laughs> and he wasn't going to tell us that he had to pee. He just wanted to play. But his yeah. mama saw it from the stands, ran down all the way around to say, he has to pee. I see the way he's running. Please get him out the game now. Yeah. But, you <laughs> so, see, but you see, you you you, you presented a, um, a time when a parent was actually valuable. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. But But most of the time as a coach, Mm-hmm. You know, 90 percent of the time when a parent oh, yeah. is screaming or oh, running yeah. around doing something during a sports game, they're mm-hmm. not adding value, bro. Mm-hmm. They're actually triggering us. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we're Absolutely. now we're looking at them like, yo, what the hell are you doing? Your kid has one coach, maybe an assistant coach. Mm-hmm. You don't need to listen to 20 different people on this damn mm-hmm. court. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, nah. and those are the times that I feel we as parents, we got to do better at identifying mm-hmm. Yo, what triggers us here, right? So, mm-hmm. like in the basketball court, like for, for example, we had a game, and yo, I'm I'm a I like to antagonize people, man. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna lie about it. Like I'm a, <laughs> I'm a competitive people. I like to jab. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I like to jab uh-huh. at you. So uh-huh. I'm the type that when we had our playoff game, I don't sit at our side. I yeah. sit on the opposing team side. Okay, you know what I mean. Ooh. And when Ooh. I'm sitting on the opposing team side. They don't really know who I am. You know, there's just another Spanish dude up in here. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so they don't know who I am. And I'll sit there and I'll listen to the parents talking trash. Mm-hmm. And I do that because I want to talk trash, too. Mm-hmm. But I do that with the caveat of knowing that when I'm talking trash, I understand the game. Not only mm-hmm. do I understand the rules, but I understand that there is going to be a winner. There is going to be a loser. After this game, there's no feelings attached to that, to that outcome. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I have to understand and, and put myself in position of the other parents and say, yo, they might not mm-hmm. <laughs> like they might be screaming out foul when there's not even their ball yet. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like there's parents that jump on the court and start screaming, yo, my child was fouled. My child was fouled. And it's like, dogs, your child didn't have the ball and mm-hmm. they weren't nowhere near to play. Wow. But you're screaming for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm the type that actually likes to sit in the middle of that and hear all the nonsense in a form, it, in a way, it's, it's therapeutic for me, right? Mm-hmm. I get to talk trash with them, but then I also get to see what I don't like that people do for like that. I don't do it, mm. which is like you'll hear a parent screaming at the coach. Like I heard a, a, a parent tell a coach this weekend, um, yo, we're supposed to beat that team by 20. Mm-hmm. Mind you, we're killing his team by like 12. Mm-hmm. But he's screaming, yo, we got to beat them by 20. And I see all the kids looking at him and I'm like, yo, you just fucking up the whole game. That's right. Like, your your That's kids right. are not going to catch up. We, mm-hmm. we are giving them the business. We came to play. We're running our plays. We're giving them the business. There's no way in hell y'all catching up. Mm-hmm. 
you're making it worse mm. by screaming to the coach. Yeah. Now the co- you know what the coach did? Took his what? son out. Took his son out and looked at him and told him, "Yo, your son sucks." Mm. <laughs> you know, he gave him that look, like, "Yo, I took him out because your your son is not performing right now." Mm. So you could stand on the on in the bench and bitch all you want, but ultimately I'm the coach, and it's it's embarrassing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is. It's embarrassing, but to me, it leads to something deeper, right? Because when you think about a trigger, a trigger is that thing. It's a stimulus that gets you out of character, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's it's something that you know that you know it could be a person, a type of person. It could be it could be an individual, like somebody with a name, like you know it could be a parent, a sibling, a spouse, a homeboy, a neighbor, yeah. whatever. It could be an actual person. It could also be a circumstance or a situation. Right. Like some people are triggered when they're hungry or some people are triggered when they haven't slept. Some people are triggered when they're dealing with financial you know, issues or family issues or, or what or all of the above or you, all of the you above. You mentioned money. You mentioned sleep. You mentioned family. Come on, That's man. Right. If those That's those right. things, if those if one of those three things don't trigger you, mm-hmm. then man, you a real superhero. You well, <laughs> I wouldn't even say a superhero. You might just be emotionally void. Right. But what do you mean by emotionally void, though? Do you mean so, like like emotionally um, not with it where you have no emotions, where you don't where the emotions don't get to you? It's like, you know, so sometimes people um, like when you hear, you know, individuals who communicate and they kind of have like this Zen presence where like nothing bothers them, like, oh, everything is fine. Nothing yeah. is, you know, nothing's bad. Nothing's good. I'm just even there's sto- like stoicism. Like you'll see a lot of, you know, people in, in some of the podcast spaces really kind of dive into stoicism. That this, yeah. this whole ancient way of, you know, just basically thinking like never positive too- affirmations, always well, thinking positive. positive. It's just basically like you're never too high. You're never too low. You're just you're even no matter what. And I would say for me personally, I think emotions are there for a reason. Right. And I use the analogy that, you know, emotions can ride shotgun, but they should never drive your car. Right. So you should have them. They should, you know, control the temperature a little bit. It's like, yeah, you're supposed to be sad in some instances, upset in some instances, happy in some instances. You're you're there for a reason. And if you don't experience those emotions, to me, I would say that person is emotionally void or they have a guardrail up that's blocking themselves from feeling those emotions. But now, then the other side is that is that is that is that ultimately a bad thing though? Because I look at it and say, you know, growing up where I grew from, we all had cold hearts, right? Mm-hmm. Where things didn't just like hurt us like that. We were we were super strong because we saw the worst, right? Mm-hmm. So I look at it and say that, you know, we do show some empathy, mm-hmm. but we're also living in reality, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like maybe but, some people but, but don't get triggered because mechanism. is it? Because I I look at it as if I'm if if something trick doesn't trigger me, it doesn't mean that I don't care about it. It just means that maybe my reality is a little bit different where maybe what triggers somebody else is my expectations. I think it's a defense mechanism. Back yeah. to what I said before, because you think about it, if you're a person who grew up in an environment in which you experienced significant trauma, right? Significant yeah. violence, you know, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, losing their life to violence or just whatever it may be, right? Um, yeah. If that's something that is an unfortunate reality that happens on a regular basis, you and if you get completely um, emotionally like detached, polarized or affected yeah. by those things, one of the challenges is you then have a challenge in navigating through life effectively. Right. So mm-hmm. to navigate through life, you have to almost block some of the noise out. And in certain instances, some of the noise might be traumatizing events because, yo, I'm used to, you know, everybody got, you know, from certain neighborhoods, everybody got a homeboy that's been killed or somebody, everybody got somebody has been locked up or everybody's seen this go down or that go down. And it's just like, it's kind of a day to day thing. And it doesn't mean it is right. But, and, but I do understand that sometimes you do have to put, put, you know, give another example. Let's take it away from the, the violence thing. If you are a physician, that's a surgeon, Right. And you're a surgeon that periodically will lose a patient, right? That physician, yes, they might not want to lose a patient and they do their best to save that patient's life, but they cannot be so emotionally invested in that loss of life that it keeps them from being able to perform that trauma surgery to save that next patient that they have to deal with. So they have to put emotionally some type of guardrail up where it almost appears like they're cold 
but they're not. It's a defense mechanism which allows them Excellent. to effectively do their job. And so I think yeah. in your circumstance or the situation that you gave, people in certain environments put blocks up as a defense mechanism so that they can live. Because think about it, dude, if you're in a place in which gun violence is prevalent and yeah. you get completely shook every time you see the news come on and somebody got shot down the street or on the next block or whatever, you're going to be you're going to be a basket case. Yeah. Which, again, I can understand how some people do have challenges there. But on the flip side, if that's your reality, it's like you have to figure out a way to survive. And so it's the, it's the, it's the rules of the land. Right. Because yeah. in that situation that you're saying, you know, um, when when you're accustomed to seeing violence or people getting hurt. Um, yes, it is a defensive mechanism. Right. Because you're, mm -hmm. you, you don't want to be involved in that. But at the mm -hmm. same token, that's what's kind of guiding you maybe in a positive way too, where if you see somebody getting violent, you might be actually able to stop them. You might actually mm -hmm. say, yo, I know where this leads to. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be all frantic, going crazy, screaming, yo, court. like when you see a fight, right? When mm -hmm. you see a fight, you yeah. hear people screaming yeah. like crazy. And it's mm -hmm. like, yo, they're screaming, but what they're doing is adding more problems to the issue mm -hmm. instead of actually solving it, right? So now but, when, but, you're, but, when you're used to it, you might actually come in and say, yo, chill, take a second. Mm -hmm. Let's let's figure out a right solution for this instead of making the situation worse. But but see, the challenge is and this is where you start getting into like trauma and PTSD and, yeah. and all of that or people having emotional issues later on is, yes, you're in that environment right now. So you got to have these guardrails up so that you can navigate. But fast forward 10 years, you're no longer in that environment and you still have those emotional guardrails. Yeah. Up. Yeah. See, people don't always have the ability to turn the switch on when they need to, but then also toggle back and turn it off, right? Yeah, it's yeah, kind of like when somebody you. goes to the military and they've had to do things that people can't imagine in normal civilian life. And then they come back home and two months later, they're supposed to be a loving husband and a, you know, a, a great father to their infant yeah. kids and all of that. And it's like, dude, I was just sent over here to kill people. And now I'm supposed to come over here and, and, and be loving on my wife and my kids. Yeah, the it's culture a side. challenge. Yeah, it's a culture shock. Yeah, it's it a culture side. And, and I think that's the same thing. Like I like I was trying to, you know, relay with the with the basketball message where mm -hmm. it's like, you know, some parents um sometimes get, get triggered by the game, right? Mm -hmm. And I am their trigger. Yes. And and I am their trigger because I know the competitive nature of the sport, right? So mm -hmm. my thing is always I'm gonna go where the competition is at. Mm -hmm. I don't like it easy. I like mm -hmm. I like the rough, you know, the rough road. I like the mm -hmm. off-road adventures, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to go here and start that trouble, but I'm not starting trouble. What I'm doing is I'm being competitive, right? But at the same time, Ooh. I'm still being very cognizant of the fact that they don't know what competition really looks like. To them, oh, competition oh, oh, oh. is, yo, my son has to do well and win. And to me, competition is, yo, winning today doesn't mean nothing. It's, are they going to win the championship? So I'm never going to come here and belittle a team that mm. doesn't have it all together because my team is better than theirs. You know what I mean? You, you <laughs> but you, but but you mentioned that was interesting though. So you come with one intention, but yeah. what's interesting, and you know, you and I both know this. We're communicators, we're podcasters, yeah. coaches, whatever. We do all this stuff on the back end. Um, you put something out there, but you have no control over how people take it. Yes, right? yes, yes. And yes. so you knowing consciously that you are a trigger to yeah. somebody <laughs> yes, and yes. you're going in i see you see i'm going somewhere i'm going personal with you now and you Yo, know, i love it bro i love it dude, <laughs> i like being the bad guy bro i like being the bad guy i like yeah. showing people that yo i look like a quiet dude sitting in this corner but yo mm -hmm. i will give you hell <laughs> uh -huh. but but hold on but see but check this out you are wired to handle that and take that you're actually looking for that right yeah yeah but what if you're triggering somebody who can't handle it and you're not the recipient of it maybe they you opened up something and now their kid is the recipient of it on the yeah. way home or and their that, kid that, is getting berated from the stands because james them been talking all this shit and got yeah. their daddy all riled up so now their daddy is not <laughs> going to take you. it out because yep, yep. he ain't fooling with you. He's like this yeah. Spanish kid from from the Bronx. I don't know. He might he might have a little <laughs> something under his shirt. I ain't fooling with him. But my kid, I'm gonna get it. My kid and yeah. my kid's gonna have to pay for that. So my whole thing is, how do you think about it? How do you come to grips with that? That you could be creating yeah. something that's screwing the kid up because you poking you poking the bear with the dad. <laughs> you know it's crazy, bro. Because I don't even think about that. Like I'm the type that. No, you don't. <laughs> I'm the type that after the game. 
um, being an old coach, right? I go to all the team members, even the losing team, and I tell them, "Yo, great game, man! Like you were balling mm-hmm. today." Like I, I try to give them that that little positive push, and uh-huh. I think it's because secretly I know. Yo, I just got your parents tight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where it's like, damn, I was in their world, giving it to them, not understanding that their world is not my world. Their world mm-hmm. is not, it does not equate to my world. Meaning that the things that I could handle and brush off, they necessarily can't, but they want to mm-hmm. play in this arena. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So to me, it's like, it's a balance. It's like, yeah. yo, you want to play in this arena? I right, come in this arena, but now you're going to have to deal with the consequences. Mm-hmm. And you might run into somebody like me that's going to love it, or you mm-hmm. might run into somebody else that gets triggered by it. Mm-hmm. Now, in the case of me triggering somebody, do I know I do it? Hell yeah. And I do it. And it, <laughs> yo, and let me be, let me be very, very honest. I do it for myself. I, mm-hmm. I triggered them for myself. And it's a wrong, it might sound wrong, right? Mm-hmm. But my thing is that when I'm sitting in a crowd and I hear parents that don't know their cause, don't know what's a walk, don't know what's mm-hmm. a carry, screaming at my kids, because I consider my whole team my kids, That's right? right? That's right. That's when right. I hear them talking shit to my kids. It's like, oh, word, y'all going to talk shit about my kids? Now I'm going to get you. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'm going to get you with reality. Mm-hmm. And that's how I know I'm going to trigger you because I'm going to hit you with the realness. Where mm-hmm. if your child got four fouls, you're going to hear me screaming to my team, telling them, yo, bump into him. Get that fifth foul. Mm-hmm. Get him out the fucking game. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I know when he gets out the game, he's going to cry. His mm-hmm. team is going to cry. And their wow. parents are going to cry. Wow. Is that wrong? Yes. <laughs> is it competitive? <laughs> Hell yeah. You know what I mean? So to me, to me, to me, I'm, I'm, I'm very unapologetic where I look at it and I say, yo, before you play the game, learn the rules. Mm. And that goes in life. That's not just basketball. Come mm. learn the rules. And the rules should be that, yo, if you're going to talk shit, if you're going to try to trigger somebody know what you're talking about, know what you're talking about, because if but, ultimately you look like an idiot, if you, but, but if see, you don't know what you're talking about. But, but, you, but you, you're you're leaning into the, the direction of just being competitive, like you're just yeah, competitive, yeah. whereas when I think about and I and I because again competitiveness is is different, right? Yeah, From yeah. being someone who's triggered. To me, the one who's triggered is that outlier parent who's like, you know, you got an eight U basketball team and you're cussing from the stands. Yo, they think their kids going to the NBA. They're like, yo, they, they think their kids are fighting for a 10 day max contract when they're just mm-hmm. trying to fight to live life. Yo, mm-hmm. have some fun. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's <laughs> it. I mean, it's just and so and again, and I, I think there are warranted triggers. On the flip side, I think they're unwarranted. Like, I mean, warranted triggers are like. I remember a couple of years ago, my little boy played flag football and we played against the team and the refs legitimately were basically letting them play tackle football. Right. And flag. Flag. I mean, they were, yeah. yeah, it was flag, but they were letting them, I mean, super, I mean, like blocking hardcore, running people over. They were letting this stuff happen. And the team that we were playing, a lot of the kids were a lot bigger than everybody else. And so it was one of those things where, you know, that was a warranted trigger. It's like, look, fam, y- y'all can't do this. This is not tackle football. They're not wearing pads. You might as well put pads on them if you're going to let them play this yeah, way. You might right? hurt one of our kids. You might you hurt, might one, hurt of one of our kids. And if y'all keep letting them do that, then it's going to be some consequences and repercussions, not with the kids, but w- with us, right? Yeah. So that's a warranted trigger. To me, the unwarranted trigger is just when a parent is like berating their child or a parent yeah. is going off on the coaches or a parent is, you know, cussing at the refs and just going crazy. And again, I'm not talking about adult stuff. I'm not talking about the NFL or the NBA. I'm yeah. talking about you sports, teen, sports, 10, you 10 year old kids or whatever. That to me is a deeper issue because to your point, it goes back to, well, what, I mean, like you mentioned, maybe they think their kids going pro or something. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, everybody, we all, we, yeah, all we all want it. We all want it, but the reality of it is, come on, yeah, man. the numbers, the numbers don't play in your favor. Yeah, yo, you know. shout out to, shout out to the, what, what, what the baller family, right? What, what's the, oh the my gosh, yeah, oh, yeah, the ball, the ball, yeah, family. the ball family. Come on, man, shout out to them. Like this dude got three of them in there. He he, you know how hard, it, and, and he was an NBA player, which, dude, which is almost impossible, bro. That's almost but, impossible. But, but you know, but see, I think his was a little different in the sense that you know. He was not triggered. He was a strategic marketer, right? But he was so, triggering people. He and was triggered. Oh, that yeah. goes, oh, that he goes was into what you were saying, which is where it's like there's warranted trigger and mm-hmm. then there isn't. And his warranted trigger was y'all going to talk trash. Y'all going to look at me and think I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. Y'all triggering me now. Now mm-hmm. I'm going to get upset. Y'all telling mm-hmm. me that my kids ain't going to make it. Mm-hmm. Watch what the fuck they do. Well, but you, but you, you check this out, though. I don't th- I- I think he was actually a marketing genius, right? Of course. I would almost of course. put him- 100%. He was, basically, he was a grown-ass man that was a troll, 
Because Yo, what he was, he's Vince McMahon, bro. He's Vince yeah, McMahon he was, from the WWE. He was Vince McMahon. He was Takashi Six Nine. He yeah. was uh, who else? Little Nas X. He was he was all of these guys who were who were brilliant marketers who said, "Look, how do I keep them talking about me? Oh, I can. How tell do them, I trigger know, them? So how do I, I trigger them? How do I trigger them? Because I mean, he, he was were. saying, "Oh, I would beat Charles Barkley or Michael Jordan. <laughs> couldn't do this, and, and you know, I mean, he was well, he, doing he all of these the, things. He challenged the goats, man. How dare oh. he? <laughs> but he knew what he was doing because yeah. him doing that, it was a time period in which uh, Lamar, uh, Lavar Ball, was the headline on ESPN. They had yeah. all these other things going on. What is Lavar Ball say? He was on ESPN. He was on all these different shows, and he was given the opportunity to promote his sons, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he, and the funny thing is, he yeah, because he got what two two in the league, two in the when league, the, and two in the league. league. One should have been in the league, but you know politics, trouble, and, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. yeah, he got in trouble. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, which yeah. is another which is a whole nother topic. You know, that's, that's right. the topic of how do you have everything and still chase the dumb things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I'm sure this kid could have bought whatever he stole. I'm sure he could have bought twenty of them, oh, and not easy. even, and they wouldn't have phased them. You know easy. what I mean? But easy. whatever, something triggered him into stealing. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. Real talk. Real talk. But but yeah. so to your point, I don't think Le- Levar Ball on a personal level was a tr- was triggering. I think his was more marketing strategery in a sense yeah. that he knew what he had to do in the social media thing to get the algorithms talking, and he did that to the T, and yeah. it worked. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like our wives, bro. Mm-hmm. Like our, our wives are the ultimate marketing people in our family. We just yes. don't consider them to consider them that when well, yes. they know how to trigger us, man. Yes. They know how to say oh, yes. one statement that ruins your whole day or, oh, or has or, you ready to shake them. <laughs> or they know how to get shit done. Right. So or they, or they know how to trigger you in the most positive way to get shit done. And that's, you know, going back to what you and I spoke to spoke about a while ago when it came to health. Um, My wife was my trigger this week mm. where, where she, she was trying to be funny by telling me, yo, you know, you got you got some health issues, right? You got to mm-hmm. take care of something in the hospital. Um, your kids are afraid. Mm. I knew she I knew my kids didn't have a clue what was going on. Mm-hmm. I knew exactly what she was doing, which was, mm-hmm. yo, she was trying to use them to speak for herself. That's but she right. used them as my trigger because mm-hmm. she know that if she tells me, yo, your kids are afraid, they need you to talk to them about what's going on. Mm. I'm going to do that. Because she wanted to you to talk as opposed to her having to go and talk to them about, wow. She, she, she wanted that and she wanted me to talk to them and to talk to her. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm. let's be honest, without, you know, without taking it there, a lot of information was withheld. Mm. So if I'm if I'm not going to lie to my kids, yeah, dare I lie to her. Ooh. You, you know what I'm saying? So Ooh. it was her way of saying, yo, I'm going to use your kids mm. against you in the most positive way. Oh, you know what? You know what I mean? when, when you said that, dude, it made me think about. So, usually we look at triggers from a negative lens, but a trigger is in essence rooted in something that means something to you, right? That, that's going to get a reaction. It might it's be positive. Be, it might be negative. But it has to mean something to you, or else yeah. it would not get a reaction. Exactly. Right? So, exactly. so, for yep. instance, like I'm not a person who's big on like clothes and all that stuff, right? Like you, you all flip shoes and sneakers and all that. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I have never paid more than I don't think I've ever paid more than about eighty dollars for a pair of shoes for myself ever in my life. Wait, wait, right? wait, time out. We're not gonna catch you with some off white Jordans, bro. We gotta change that. We gotta change that I'm one day, saying, bro. I'm not saying I will never. I just said okay. I have never thus far. I think you know. Take that back. Take it back. When I was a teenager. Back, I think the the um the Allen Iverson joints when I was in questions. like high school, they were yeah the, the question the answer the whatever it was the I had yeah, all it was black the questions. Books. I think they yeah. were like about a hundred bucks. I think when I bought yeah one thirty one twenty yeah 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 back in the day it was like one nineteen something like that yeah um and then I think and then I had bought another pair of something when I was like in high school or middle school with my birthday money or whatever. But as an adult, I have never paid more than about eighty bucks for a pair of sneakers. That's just yeah. That's just me. Right. So you can't trigger me when it comes to stuff about sneakers and clothes and all that, because I'm like, eh, you know, whatever. Doesn't matter. It doesn't, really, doesn't, matter doesn't, doesn't really matter to me. But for someone like, you know, you all are in the business of flipping sneakers and this and that. So something in the sneaker game might be a trigger for for you or your boy, because, you know, oh, he's in, yeah. he's in the midst of it. Oh, man, I got the perfect trigger. Mm-hmm. I got the perfect trigger. Okay. Homeboy has access to all the fly sneakers in the world. And where's the same shitty uh, Kyrie Irving sneakers that he got that uh-huh. are all beat up? And you you guys hear me say it all the time. He mm-hmm. be looking homeless, man. Mm-hmm. That's my trigger. That's my trigger. It's like, yo, dude, how you got all these damn sneakers, man? Uh-huh. Well, access to all of these sneakers. 
mm-hmm. and you decide to wear busted down sneakers that you wore for CYO basketball, man. Mm-hmm. But, like it's, but it's because, weird. That, because <laughs> that means something to you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You're a sneaker guy. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? And so that's the thing. It's like our triggers. It's kind of like um, just like anything. They're always rooted in something that matters, because if it doesn't matter, it wouldn't trigger you. So going back to the initial example of parents being triggered at basketball games involving their kids, you know, rarely do you see someone triggered at a game that's not a parent of the kid playing. Yep. Yep. You got it. You got it. You see what I'm saying? They they, they, they want the best. They want their kids to to perform, you know, shine and look good for them. Um, Mm -hmm. But the reality is that sometimes that's not the case, man. Pause, pause. You just said something. You said look good for them. For them, not for them, not for the kids, for them. You know what I mean? And that's why going back to the beginning of the conversation, I like to sit where the heat is at because I look at it and I say, yo, I'm here to support my child. Win Mm. or lose. I know my son can't play ball. So I know when he touches that ball, it might be a turnover. It might Mm. be an air Mm. ball. I'm going to laugh it off, but I Mm. know you can't. So if you're mm. going to talk trash to my son, I'm going to remind you that your son ain't that better. <laughs> but, but, so, so, dude, so it's, it's interesting. So think it, that's, that's, that's because, dude, it, it's crazy to just think about it. The trigger is not necessarily due to or about the well-being or the performance of the child. It's about how the child makes you look as a yeah. parent. And it goes, let me tell you, I did an interview with a guy um this guy named Halloran Hilton Hill he's like in the Tennessee Radio Hall of Fame and all that stuff he's really dope brother but one of the things he said about fatherhood he said it's not about being known as a good father it's about being a good father yes because so many of us strive to I want to be known as xyz not I want to be x y and z and so that whole trigger thing I think is rooted in the I want to be known as a dope dad who has a kid that's a baller not yeah. I have a kid that's a baller. <laughs> if you're living, you're living through them, man. That's it. You know what I mean? And, and living through them is a no go. Especially, no-go. especially around me, because mm-hmm. once again, I, I live in a very realistic space mm-hmm. where I look at things and I say, I'm I'm not gonna say certain things or do certain things because I know that in your realistic space, it's not the same. It doesn't feel dude, the same. Dude, you know I'm what I mean? What's, what's, and it took me a lot. It took kids for me to learn to do that. Because when I was younger, 22, 23 years old, I didn't give a fuck. It mm-hmm. was like, yo, if I triggered you by calling you ugly, mm-hmm. you better believe I'm going to say ugly 100 times in front of you just to trigger you because mm-hmm. I like the banter. I like the mm-hmm. back and forth. Mm-hmm. So to me, it was always like I was the kid that when we when we used to snap on each other, my friends and I, we had this thing called um, No Holds Bar Friday. Right. Okay. And we were teens. We mm-hmm. would go in the car. You know, we do our thing. We smoke a little joint. Four mm-hmm. or five of us in a minivan. Mm-hmm. And, yo, it's a snap war. Snap mm-hmm. war. Mm. And my friend and I, we were the best. And we used to tell our friends all the time, yo, remember what's going to happen today. Somebody's going to leave here mad, but we still love each other. Right. Mm. And I would tell all my friends, yo, watch when you come after me, because Mm. if you come after me with a lie, I'm going to hurt you with the truth. Mm. I knew what triggered people since then, which is the truth triggers. If you tell somebody, yo, you're, you're screaming at somebody's child saying that they suck. But in reality, your child sucks. Yo, they might swing at you. Mm. Because that's the truth. And they don't like the truth. People don't like the truth, especially from strangers. Mm. So I used to tell all my friends, yo, we don't have this no holds bar Friday. But understand that everything that I say to y'all is going to be truthful. I'm going to put a negative twist to it to hurt your feelings. But it's going to be truthful. Can you do the same? If you can't do the same, then you shouldn't be in this car, man. Dude, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what's what's interesting. So no whole ball, no whole no hose bar. bar Friday, bro. We, it was embarrassing, embarrassing. Dude. I look back now and it's like, shit. The things that we said to each other, bro. Oh my goodness. But, but, it, but it, it, it strengthened us. You know what I mean? But I, I'll tell you, it strengthened you. But what it also did was you created a a, a title, but you also created a space. So it's kind of like the difference between somebody just getting into a fight on the street where you don't know yeah. if somebody got a gun or knife or whatever under their, under their jacket or whatever, versus someone in a boxing ring with gloves, a referee rules and all of that. So you created an environment that's like a boxing ring where it's like, okay, yes, people do get seriously injured in a boxing ring, 
but it's a lot less likely for serious injury in a boxing ring versus a street fight where you don't know what's about to happen. Yeah, you don't know who's control. about to get involved. So you you created this element of control. And I think that's the part of it where we have to think about triggering is somewhat okay when there's some boundaries and there's yeah. some element of control. The challenge comes in, and we've seen this. We've seen all kinds. I mean, we can probably pull up thousands of clips where people get to fighting in the stands yeah. or somebody yeah. gets shot or somebody gets whatever, you know, due to- but They weren't ready for that. They weren't ready for that. And there's, it's not uh, an environment or the rules of engagement were not stated up front. Yeah, right? they're, not, like, they're, they're not straightforward. They're not straight. What, what is it? They're just not stated. So it's not uh, like it's I'm not, sitting here. Because nobody, because nobody thinks about it. As opposed no. to like what we were doing with, with our, uh, you know, No Hose Bar Friday, we were expecting that every Friday. Every Friday mm-hmm. it was, yo, save your money up, mm-hmm. go buy your shit, right? Mm-hmm. We all going to go in the whip. We're all going to have, we're all going to share. We're going to have some fun as mm-hmm. friends. Mm-hmm. But let the jokes flow. Mm-hmm. But this doesn't leave the car. But but you all create <laughs> you know I mean? rules of engagement. That's what I'm saying. That's, yeah. But and so I think if you know you like how you like to trigger the uh, other parents in the stands. If yeah. you were to initially state like, look, hey, you know this is all love. I'm coming here. I'm, I'm gonna talk yeah. all the shit in the world, just so y'all know, right? But 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 I'm gonna talk shit. But just know it's all love. It ain't nothing. Mm-hmm. You know nothing. Nothing. No whole. No, it's nothing personal personal here nothing right? personal yep yeah and we're, and we're creating that framework then it's kind of like you let people know and then it's like okay so whatever he says even though i might not like it i'm not gonna take it personal i mean some people still yeah. might and i think that's the problem when it comes to triggering and self-control is it's hard to have self-control without those rules of engagement yep. established up front because you don't know what that other person's going to do. And our natural inclination is to be defensive. So if I'm like, okay, I'm going here, but I don't know if this person's coming here. So I'm like, hold up, I got to defend myself. Right. And that's where stuff gets out of pocket. And I think that's where we have to be careful as parents with our triggers. And we need to be very mindful of what those triggers are and to maybe put some guardrails up so that you can basically establish some limits. Right. Or if you're going to go there and be triggered, figure out a way to establish some rules of engagement so you have a controlled environment because our kids are watching. You know no, what I'm it, saying? Because again, we do this yeah. for our kids. You know, and, and you know, one, one thing that you said was like, identify what triggers you, right? Yes. And I think that's very difficult. I think, mm. you know, real talk, I think that's really hard for for us to, to define what triggers us because for us as parents, anything that touches our kids trigger us. Right. Yeah, ooh, I, so, I, so that's a I, I so that's a pro. I, I I think anything. Okay, you know what? Anything negative that mm-hmm. touches our kids will trigger mm-hmm. us. I, I guess that's more of a of a general statement, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think of it, and I look at it, and I say we need to do better as to knowing who our triggers are, right, or what our mm-hmm. triggers are. But it's hard for us to know that. So, who do you go to to find that out? Ooh. In my case, I'm lucky enough to have my wife, mm-hmm. and I'm lucky to have a a, a selected group of friends. That have no problem telling me, yo, James, you're a dick because of such mm-hmm. and such. Mm-hmm. Right. So mm-hmm. now I'm able to actually put my guard down and say, all right, if four or five people are saying the same thing, mm-hmm. then that must be my trigger. That mm-hmm. must be what gets me going. But it's still it's still not something that we as fathers or at least myself, I'll speak for myself. I'm not looking forward to doing every day. Like I'm not going out there saying, yo, Mike, bro, um, can you tell me what triggers me, bro? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to do that. We're going to talk. And, th- and I think that's harder. So how do, how do you suggest dads find out what is it that triggers them and how do they listen to that? Because if their wife always triggers them, you know, you got a whole subset right there because mm-hmm. your wife, your wife knows exactly what button to press. Mm-hmm. Is it as simple as asking her? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I would say this, man. Again, I'm one that's always you start inside before you go outside. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're required to go outside first then whatever you're seeking is always dependent on someone else. And even if you are blessed to have a wife like you and I both are, or, you know, you have a a circle of friends that you can always rely on that know everything about you, that's good. But then there are moments like right now, my wife is not here with me, right? So if I needed someone right now, who do I, I mean, yeah, I can call or text or figure out or get to somebody, but we have to start in before we go out. And you mean I in within dis- yourself. You mean within, within you yourself. have to start yeah. within yourself. Okay, okay, and, okay. And, and I disagree with the notion of it's hard to identify your triggers. 
I think most people know what their triggers are. They just never taken the time to sit with them. So, the, you know, it's one of the trainings that I do. Is Wait, come on, 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 come on. We got to take that back. We got to take that back. Come on. All right. So we 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 know what what's in the triggers, right? How do we sit down and write out what these things are? Because I I disagree with you. I think I think that we do know them. I know what gets me upset. Yes, that's it. But but being realistic with myself and writing down, yo. These are the 10 things that trigger me. Yo, you ain't going to get me to do that, man. <laughs> you don't have to. It's not about writing down. It's about yeah. recognizing, right? Yeah. Because the thing is, it, it's, it's like, so it, one of the, like my signature training that I do, you know, double down on you yeah. and everything. The last thing is, you know, recognize, you know, your triggers and put guardrails up. Like the whole yeah. point of it is if you, your triggers are the one thing that could legitimately derail you from your greatness. You know, a lot of people are sitting in jail because of triggers. A lot of people yes. have gone yes. through divorces and this and that all because of their triggers. And if they were honest about it and they spent time with themselves, see being by yourself and spending time with yourself are two different things. Ooh, being by yourself. I like that. I like that. I like that. Talk. No, it's true. It's true. Yeah. So you think about this being by yourself is you're just there, right? Spending time with yourself is you're paying attention. It's kind of like with your wife. Like if I'm spending time with my wife, I'm paying attention to how she reacts to this, what she's doing, her emotions, her facial expressions, or this or that. I'm paying attention to her. If I'm just sitting on the sofa and I'm just there, I'm just there. I'm not noticing anything. See, the thing is, we spend time with people externally. We don't spend time with ourselves. So spending time with yourself is noticing. It's like, man, why do I get upset when this happens? Like, man, why do I get frustrated when somebody hits this? Why do I, you know, act this way when I haven't eaten breakfast? Why do I act this way when, you know, I didn't sleep well the night before? Why do I act this way when I'm having financial troubles? Why do I? And the thing is, you start to understand. And if you just ask yourself that question, you'll realize that, man, I literally have a few things that cause me to get out of character. I know who I am. I know how I operate. But the thing is, I need to pay attention to when I go from zero to 100. What gets me completely off kilter, right? Those things, those are my triggers. So now that I recognize them, and to see, again, it, it just goes back to spending time with ourselves. We're in this microwave society where nobody wants to take a moment to think. Right. It's like, I got to have it now. Got to have it now. If I'm watching a video and it's not interesting in 30 seconds, on to the next one. Yeah, right. It's just like the, we're the attention we're constantly... span is just, it's just it's different. The attention span is different, but also um, the realistic level is also different now. Yes. Because I think I think that's what I'm trying to, to allude to where they, we we know what triggers us. Yes. But it, it's very difficult for us to accept that these things trigger us. Like that's we want to lie to ourselves. Yes. You know, like that's why that's why I grouped it all up and said for me. Anything that that touches my kids in a negative way mm-hmm. is more than likely going to trigger me because mm-hmm. my my whole thing is I'm living for them. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm living to protect them. So mm-hmm. if I see something that affects them that they might not know how to control, mm-hmm. I'm going to jump the gun mm-hmm. and handle it myself instead of trying to teach them how to handle it. Like I you might teach what? them how to handle it after, mm-hmm. but I'm going to jump the gun because now I'm triggered. But but check you know this out I mean? though. I, I, and I actually did an episode recently about this, and it's just like we do our kids a disservice by mm-hmm. not allowing them to work through problems and our issues. And yeah. this is really yeah. a prevalent challenge for privileged kids. And your your kids and my kids are technically privileged. They right? are, bro. They are privileged. They, they yeah. have everything they need. They get a lot of what they want. They're not struggling for this or that. I mean, they don't have to do certain things to get basic necessities met, right? I mean, yeah. they they yeah. got loving parents. They got to go to organizations. They travel. They do they this. Sheltered, they sheltered, bro. They sheltered to a certain degree. You know what but, I mean? But the thing is, there is a lot of individuals who grow up with kids that way who don't have any level of resilience, uh, grit, and basically stick to itness, right? And so we have to figure out ways. And I think we talked about this in a previous episode. We have to create ways in which they work through issues, they get through problems, they get through difficulties, because what we end up inevitably doing is we create these soft, powder puff kids that don't know how to work through anything and they expect everything to be given to them. And that goes to that whole premise of what do they say? My grandfather, we say, uh, why my grandfather drove a Chevrolet, I drive a Benz, my kid will drive a Lamborghini, but my grandkid will be back walking or something. It was like, what do they say? Tough men create, uh, what's it, what's they say? It was like tough men create, no, tough times create strong men Strong men create easy times. Easy times create weak men. Weak men create tough times. And so it's kind of like this whole 
cycle circle. of yeah. you know uh, of things going on and if we don't figure out a way to with our kids who are privileged create these obstacles for them to overcome in controlled environments they yeah. don't know how to work through things yeah but i think even with that even even like when you have like like for example going back to the gym right mm-hmm. going back to the gym your kids can't defend themselves because mm-hmm. they're you don't want them to like That's i right. don't want i don't want my child running up up and down the court arguing with the crowd no, now, not at all. Not if, at all. if he if he shoots a free throw and it goes in, you know, he might throw them the little little mm-hmm. shish sign. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. Put his, <laughs> his finger above his mouth. So that's a time when we could come in and get, you know, when we could get triggered and we could find ways to to protect our kids. But we have to find ways that we protect them that doesn't put them that doesn't shine a negative light on them. Right. Mm. So, so what I'm trying to say is like in a basketball game, you know, you'll have parents screaming at their kids. Yo, what the fuck? Why you didn't make that free throw? Whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. They're shining a negative light on their kid because now the rest of the gym is knows that you see your child as that mm. now the rest of the gym isn't saying in their head yo that kid can't shoot free throws mm. the rest of the gym is now saying yo their dad knows he can't shoot free throws mm. <laughs> and that triggers the dad even more mm. you know what i mean but there are times when a dad has to step in and say i'm triggered by something that you're doing towards my kids i'm gonna stand in because they can't do it now Ooh. but i'm all I'm, I'm with you where if somebody talks trash to my son like my oldest I will straight up push him and tell him, yo, go talk trash back. Man. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I can't be your defender. Mm-hmm. And that's the only way to get their mind thinking. Some parents might look at it and be like, nah, man, that's wrong. Like, you should never do that. And mm-hmm. to me, it's like, yo, you got to find that balance, right? You and the to. only way you find a balance is by knowing who you are and what you're capable of taking and not taking. Mm-hmm. I think that's still very, very difficult for a lot of parents to do. I still mm-hmm. think a lot of parents can say that they know what their triggers are and still be super triggered. So too. Now, I'm not saying that because you you asked a question, you mentioned that it's hard for us to recognize our triggers. And I said, I don't think it's hard for us to yeah. recognize our triggers. I believe that's pretty easy if we spend time with ourselves. With ourselves right? Yeah, which I but agree with. I agree with the that. Challenge is the acceptance of it. Now, that's a totally different argument. Right. That's hard. because the whole notion of it is we tell ourselves lies, lies all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. We oh, I'm this and oh, I'm that. And we're just saying it because it sounds good. But the reality is, I don't believe it. Right. Yeah, and yeah. so there's a different there's there's a difference there that I think we do need to 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 highlight It's the difference between recognizing and accepting. So you yeah. can recognize and, you know, like you I, you can rattle off like, man, I can't stand this person. I can't stand this person. This mm-hmm. type of person gets on my nerves. This situation or circumstance will have me completely over here and this will have me completely over here. Most people who spent any time with themselves can tell you that. Right. Yeah. 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 But they might be lying to themselves and they will say like, well, that's really not that big of a problem. And, oh, no, I can handle this. And, yo, know, this person, yo, know, they're cool. I can deal with them. Right. But then yeah. when that person comes in and they go. They can't deal with it. They can't, they can't deal with it. With it. So, but they so, tell themselves a lie. So acceptance, I guess what you're trying to say is acceptance does not equate to ignorance. Right. Where you can't you can't come in and say, I accept this and, and then totally say that you're ignorant to the to to what how it's going to make you feel Ooh. and then the person comes and then they make you feel that way so, so acceptance doesn't equate ignorance where some people might say mm. well if you're telling me to accept it that means i just got to ignore it mm. and no that's not necessarily the case no, no, no. what you're saying is know what it is and then learn how to deal with it yeah right? mm, so, so like it. so like so if you're the dad that doesn't like people talking trash to your kids that doesn't mean you don't put them in sports what it means is maybe you don't put yourself in the crowd like I do where the trash there talk is going to be big. <laughs> you can go sit perfect. on the sideline and just enjoy the game. That's you know what perfect. I mean? See, you recognize that. And, you know, it's kind of like, um, like that, like, OK, we're married men. If you're a person that, you know, has issues with a wandering eye, you don't need to go to the strip club. I don't care what business yeah. meeting, you know, there's certain cities. I won't call the cities out that that's the culture. <laughs> what, you saying Atlanta? You saying Atlanta? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. oh, snap. Oh, snap. Yeah. I'm going to Atlanta soon, man. Atlanta no, 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 let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> but, 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 but the thing, the thing that's interesting is there are, it's a culture in which, you know, some people business, people just say, Hey, we're going to do business. We're going to meet yeah. at the strip club and have wings and talk business. If you're a person and I don't, I mean, I don't go there. So that's not me. Yeah. But the thing is, if you're a person that doesn't need to handle that, you don't need to put yourself in that environment. You might say like, look, y'all can go there, but y'all meet me at the, um, at Starbucks when y'all get through yeah. so we can continue this, <laughs> this meeting. Yo, yo, side, side note, side note, man. I did business in Atlanta. We did, um, <laughs> we did, uh, um, what's that show? A A three C. Uh-huh. A, the A three C hip hop conference, yeah, yeah, and we spoke about business back then. It was with mm-hmm. Lamar, with Lamar Tyler, okay, um, and a couple other people. Um, 
yo, the business down there is different, right? Mm-hmm. Like they, they took me the first night we were there, we went to Magic City. Mm-hmm. Um, bro, I, people got business done. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you, I couldn't get business done. That's and, it. And it, it wasn't that it wasn't because I was uncomfortable there, mm-hmm. it was because I was super comfortable. I loved That's it. That's right. It was like, whoa, <laughs> like you know, y'all sitting there having steaks and mashed potatoes. Wow, Shorty is up there doing three flips on a pole. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. So but, I was just so distracted. That was mm-hmm. my trigger. But mm-hmm. a trigger and not in a super negative form. Mm-hmm. It was a trigger of, yo, I can't get business done here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So tomorrow, let's go to Denny's or one of these other places. Yeah. And we'll go Stop handle some business over there. Yeah. <laughs> But, but it's weird. Shout out to my dads in Atlanta that do business like that, man. I commend you. You guys are some strong dudes, man. Y'all do do what you do. I'm, I mean, you know, I, that's not where I go. I understand my limitations and I don't need to go in that direction. That's not for me. That's yeah. not the environment for me yeah. to spend a lot of time. <laughs> but it's the same thing like with alcohol, right? Like there's some yeah. people who are triggered by liquor, right? And so you don't need to do business at the bar or you don't need to do business over drinks if you know that, yo, liquor gets me to the left right yeah, little, so little you don't need much. to but it's but it's the whole premise of understanding yourself and being honest with yourself yeah. so many of us don't do that and so therefore we put ourselves in an environment and let's just say you're a person who can't handle liquor well or you have an issue with alcohol and somebody says hey let's meet for a couple of drinks and talk business and you say okay and you end up going and you embarrass yourself or you get triggered or you say the wrong thing or you do the wrong thing because that's not the right environment for you you got to be true to yourself yeah. And, and I think and I think that that goes back to to also saying that um that that like you accepting that your triggers are there mm-hmm. doesn't take away anything from you. Mm. Like you like like me being able to tell my friends, yo, when I'm in Atlanta, we got to go to an office to get business done. Mm. Doesn't mean that I'm not a man. Mm-mm. It doesn't mean that my wife is going to beat me up because I went That's to a strip right. joint. Mm-hmm. It just means that I know myself. Mm-hmm. That doesn't take away from the business that I could conduct, though. Mm-hmm. And the same thing should be applied to fathers where if you if you if you if you know what triggers you and you decide to stay away from those things that trigger you, yo, there's nothing wrong with that. Nobody it's could smart. judge you for that because it's that's smart. your reality, bro. It's yeah, smart. you the it's one that got to suffer in your real world, not the mm-hmm. other people, man. The other people just get to talk trash about it. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's and it. for me, for me, like my first acceptance of, of going to a strip joint to do business was actually talking to my wife about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I told my wife, I was like, man, I'm going to Atlanta. We have mm-hmm. friends in Atlanta. We mm-hmm. know what they, how they get down. <laughs> Understand you might see some pictures of me and the fat startup at a strip joint. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to get mad by that. And luckily mm-hmm. for me, she, she knew, she knew the game, mm-hmm. but she also knew that who I was, which was, yo, I'm not going to try to pump fake and mm-hmm. be like, yo, I'm here enjoying this. I'm getting all my mm-hmm. business done. Yo, I was enjoying it, but I couldn't get business done, man. And that's mm-hmm. just the truth. Doesn't take away from who I am as a man. And that's it. So, so, so I think that is basically a good point for everyone to understand. Be aware of your triggers, know what they are and be honest about them. And the thing is, you being honest about your triggers with yourself does not take away from you as a man, as a dad, mm-hmm. as a you know father, as a husband. It doesn't take away from you. You're just being honest with yourself in the full tra- and being fully transparent. If you're not aware of your triggers or if you're lying to yourself about it, you're putting yourself in a vulnerable position. And what we're trying to get you all to highlight is, you know, in sporting events, that was kind of the framework that we used to to open up the discussion. You know, if you know you're triggered, and James gave a perfect example, if you know you're triggered with the crowd and this and that, maybe when you're at your kid's sporting event, you sit at the end of the bench, or you sit on the other side, or you sit in a place in which you're not going to allow yourself to get triggered. That's smart business, right? You know, it's like you should run from trouble. Like, I mean, most people's people don't understand that. It's like, yeah, you have to deal with conflict. But when you know trouble is, is, is ahead. And to me, in some instances, triggers equate to trouble. Yeah. You should run from trouble. Don't go walk into trouble for no. I mean, that's stupid. It is stupid. It is stupid. But I also push back and say that sometimes you can go towards trouble if you're really true to yourself and know what the trouble is going to bring you. I'm not talking about violence. I'm talking about Let's let's bring it back to the basketball, the basketball analogy that we're using. Mm-hmm. I know where there's trouble. There's trouble jumping into the visitors crowd mm-hmm. of their, their bench. Mm-hmm. I know the trouble that's going to come with it, which could be parents screaming at me. Maybe a mm-hmm. parent might want to fight me after the game or whatever. I'm cool with it because I'm not going to let that trouble dictate my actions towards it. Meaning that if a parent comes to me and says, yo, you know, 
you, you guys won. Let's go outside and fight. I'm going to laugh at them and be like, dogs, <laughs> my son is not going to the NBA. I'm not fighting you for this shit, bro. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's one of those things where you have, it still goes back to balance. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you can't balance that, then you're in trouble. Like for me, it's like, yo, I, I don't, I don't think that it's a wise thing to always run from trouble or issues. Right. Ooh. But I also think that if there's, is a trouble or issue that, you know, you cannot, you cannot solve and it's going to ruin your whole day and mess everything up for you. Yo, it's okay to walk away, but there are some good trouble. You know what I mean? There is some good trouble and good trouble might bring in good conversations for your kid. Because now when a parent comes to me, this is bad trouble, right? A parent might come up to me and say, yo, I want to fight you because your kid just crossed my son. I'm going to tell him I'm not fighting you. My kid is not going to the NBA. That's going to lead to me having a conversation with my son in the car about what just happened. Meaning, yo, son, this parent was upset that you crossed his son. Mm-hmm. Go cross him again. Mm-hmm. But he wanted to fight me, and that's not the way to do it. See, you know what I mean? I, I think, actually, I, I you know. I, it's I confusing. Just, it's confusing. I, no, 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 it's not confusing. I just disagree with the perspective because I oh. think, to me, is is semantics, right? So it's wording. Yeah. So I agree with you must address problems, and you should not run from conflict. Right. OK. Yep. yep but yep. when it's known trouble, meaning when I say trouble, this is we're going in. It's the gauge. Going, you got to gauge huh? the trouble, though. You got to gauge it's, the trouble. No, no, I, no, think, no I, think, trouble. I think what we're doing, what we're both saying is that I'm cool with little trouble. And yeah. what you're saying is that sometimes little trouble isn't little trouble. It's big I redefine, trouble. I redefine trouble <laughs> altogether. I think like, yeah. again, problems, you know, if you don't address problems, problems to me are, are like plants with roots. Right. So with yeah. a problem, you have to address and you have to pull it up by the root or else it's going to keep growing back every season. Growing. Yep. Right. Yep, yep, so you yep. have to pull problems up from the root. And I think conflict I'm one that has always been one in which I try to avoid conflict. Yeah. But the challenge is avoiding all conflict sometimes is it promotes issues because there yes. are some conflict that needs to happen. Right. Yes, conflict. exactly. Exactly. But when it comes to trouble, when I say trouble, meaning then you me, should avoid I, that. You should I avoid pers- trouble. <laughs> I, I personally define trouble as something that is guaranteed to have a negative outcome, meaning I okay. know okay. this is going to be negative. I know that this is going to spawn something crazy or yeah. I know that I'm not going. It's kind of like I live yep, in Tennessee. I'm with you. I'm with right? you on that So there, like yeah. if we know that there's a, a Ku Klux, and this is actually a reality that happened a few years ago. If we know that there's a Ku Klux Klan rally or like a white nationalist rally that's ha- ha- happening in a per- certain part of the city, I am not going to take my family in the car, go drive and park and go walk through the doggone yep, Ku Klux yep. Klan rally. That, that's a waste it's, of time, man. Stupid, waste of time. Because, yeah. because I know stupid. that that's trouble. That's not me. That's not like a, a conflict. That's not like an That's issue. not a conflict that could be resolved. That's a, a, problem. That's, a that's a troubled area. That's a trouble. I'm, yeah. I'm asking for it. Or for me, I'm, again, I'm in Tennessee, put a gun on my hip and I go down there, show everybody I'm strapped and I'm going to walk through the Ku Klux Klan rally with my family. I'm asking for trouble. That's You're stupid. For it. Yep. That that is to me. So that's when ignorance. I, so that's, yeah, that's ignorance. ignorance. That's stupidity. That's beyond yeah. ignorance because I know what I'm doing. So I'm not ignorant. I'm I'm yeah. knowing what I'm doing. I'm conscious. So my thing is when it comes to trouble, I vehemently re- believe that you should run from trouble. Meaning, if you know that this is a, a negative outcome, this is not going to. It's no potential for anything yeah. positive, and you see that you got a fork in the road, you can go to it. Or you can go to the left and go make your ass go to the left and get away from it. To me, yeah, now, no, no, I it, get it, I get it, mm-hmm. I get it. What you, what you're basically saying there is, let's use the basketball thing again. If mm-hmm. I know that a dad is gonna get triggered by my shit talking, mm-hmm. and they might swing at me, and I don't want to deal with that, that's mm-hmm. a trouble that I shouldn't be actually trying to chase. It's mm-hmm. one of those things where I should avoid it and say, yo, I know that that guy's gonna get triggered by me. I don't want those issues. Let me not trigger him. You but yeah, know what I mean? So, and that's yeah, okay. Perfect example. And that's okay. Per- yeah. Perfect example. Like, yeah, you talking shit. If you you yeah. scan him and you know that dude that just got out of the pen and you know he he fights, he shoots, yeah. he cuts, he does whatever. Are you gonna go sit next to him and talk all the shit to him about his? Hell son? no. That, that's when you no. stay away because you know you know that trigger you might know, be that's might trouble. be the end. <laughs> yeah, that's trouble. That's like that, 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 that's that's it. It's just like to me that 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 to me is it. So that's yeah. trouble, and that's yeah. a difference between conflict. And an issue. An issue is yeah. something different. That is trouble. You asking for, all right, man, you want a little killer to come on and, and, and end your life. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you tell your that's when you tell your son, yo, um, kid over there, man, don't follow him. Don't, don't try to cross him. Yo, matter of fact, when he's on the floor, yo, tell your coach, take you out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now we ain't raising no punks. Nah, now. We, 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 we ain't, ain't raising we no ain't, punks. We ain't, we ain't doing that, but we gotta add. We, we ain't doing thinking. that, but we gotta add some funniness to this because it, <laughs> it, you know that's what life is, right? Yes. Life, yes. life is difficult, yes. but it also provides you these funny moments where you can laugh about reality. Yes. Versus what people talk. Right. Mm-hmm. Where a lot of people will listen to this and be like, nah, man, if that dude is a thug and he want to fuck me up, I'm going to give it to him. I'm going to talk shit for like that. He could come after me. Mm-hmm. Yo, who are you impressing? <laughs> who are you impressing? You're so stupid. it's OK. It's OK to have fun with it and say, yo, homeboy is a thug. I ain't, rest- I ain't rocking with that, man, mm-hmm. <laughs> because I want to be here tomorrow with my kids or I don't mm-hmm. want these issues or simply I don't want my kids to see me in that type of situation. But even but if now, I let's... know I could put the beats on this guy. I mm-hmm. might not want my kids to see that because but, but it's going to bring a different side of things that we don't need. And, and I'll say, I'll say this and to see, this is totally different from defending, right? Yeah, so yeah, like if something yeah. and there's someone in danger and you need to, as a man, step up and defend, that's totally different, yep, right? Different. Yep. So yes, you're going in and you're defending someone in which, you know, you know, somebody's messing with something. Yeah. That's different from I'm stoking the flame and I'm antagonizing this person. And I know this is going to be ill. Right. Yes, or I yes. know that this is a this is, you know, it's about to be a shootout happening here. We're going to drive straight through it. Stupid. No, we're not yeah. going to a place in which we know that there's going to be a negative outcome. On the flip side, as men, we do have to defend at times. And so I get that. That is yep. different. Right. But yeah. stoking it and being the, the antagonist or being the dog on the accelerant to this fire. No, yeah. no, fam. <laughs> no, nah, I feel you, man. I feel you. That this is you see, these are the conversations I love, bro. Yes. Because these conversations are the ones that that tell us, yo, Mike D is in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> James Lopez is in New York City. Mm-hmm. It's totally different environments, but mm-hmm. we have the same worries and thoughts. Yes. We we know that there's things out there that'll trigger you mm-hmm. that might not trigger me. But mm. we both know the results of what being triggered feels like. Ooh. We both know what the results of being on the opposite side of doing the triggering feels mm-hmm. like because we both are married. Mm. We both trigger our wives. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest, we both trigger our kids. Mm-hmm. So we know both sides of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we forget. That's we forget right. that there's different sides to it. We yes. look at it and say, yo, if I'm going to be acceptance of, of my triggers, then that also means that I must be ignorant to my triggers. And that's not necessarily the case. No. You know what I mean? And I think that conversations like this brings that out mm-hmm. where now other dads can look at it and say, Hey, you know what? When I was, when I didn't want to trigger that dude on the street, I did the right thing. That's right. But then when I went to the court and I triggered them by talking trash, Hey, I still did the right thing. Mm-hmm. Like there's differences. There's a balance. Mm-hmm. And the only way that you, the father know how to balance that, or the only way you're going to find out how to balance that, is to be real with your own world Ooh. because I can't judge you. Nope. I can't judge you, Mike Dorsey, mm-hmm. for how you handle your triggers in your world. That's your right. world does not affect me. That's My right. world does not affect you. Mm-hmm. Why pass judgment? We just instead, learn from it. We yeah, instead, learn from it. That's I right. get to learn from Mike every time we talk. Mm-hmm. And I get to I learn get... from James every time we talk. That's, this and, is what and, this thing is all about. And sometimes I'm going to take the things that you say and I'm going to run with it and apply mm-hmm. them. Sometimes I'm going to throw them to the trash. That's right. As you should. That's OK. That's, That's the it. real world. See, I, so- I hate I hate that everybody feels that fatherhood is one size fits all. Ooh. That if you're a great father, then your thoughts are correct over my over my thoughts. Mm-hmm. Why can't I be a great father just like you and have different thoughts? Dude, check the, check this out, man. I'm gonna tell you it's so powerful that you're saying that. I was interviewed on a platform yesterday, and at the end of it, he asked me, "What is my definition of manhood?" And you know, again, as you think and as you evolve and as you grow, and I said, manhood is having the ability and the capacity to do what's needed and or necessary in the moment. Yeah, that's manhood. Yeah. So it was yeah. not like twelve points. It was like, no, we have the ability and the capacity to do what's needed and or necessary in the moment. That's and then that fits you. And, and that's that fits it. you as a man. That's it. It's not even about, it's not even, to me, it's not even what fits me. It's what's needed to be done in the moment. Yeah, so yeah. to me, for, a that, man for is that particular, more, for that particular man, you know, for, or yeah, person. What, yeah, whatever. Yeah. What, what I, and yeah. the thing is, to me, is it's, it's a very broad definition, but the reality is whatever needs to be done. If you need somebody that needs to cook dinner, yo, I need to be able to cook dinner. If you need somebody who needs to throw them things, I need to be able to throw them things. If you need somebody who needs to hug and cry and console, you need to be able to do that. If you need somebody who needs to cut the grass and fix the lawnmower, you need to be able to do that. To me, being a man is being what's 
needed or having the capacity and the ability, right? Or having the desire or the will to do what's needed in the moment. And that's what this like thing that, is all about. I like that, man. I, th- I think that's a, a, a great a great definition for what fatherhood is all about. Yeah, right? that's because it. That's what it is. You, you do what, what you feel is right or having the capacity to think about what you feel might be right or wrong, right? At mm-hmm. that moment for your kids. Like that's, that's a it. perfect definition for a parent because you cannot mm-hmm. pass judgment on that. That's right. That, that definition is very, very broad. Yes. But it's also very specific. Yes. And the, the specific side of it is do you. That's right. Do, <laughs> do you. Do, well, I would even, you know, what? I would, t- I would say I would take it a little different and say, no, don't do you do what's best for the moment. And, and I okay. think yep, because yep, yep. Be- because sometimes doing me might mean that I don't do what's best in the moment because yeah, me, right. my right. idea is, you know, I'm wired to do this. But the reality is in the moment, they need me to be something totally different. There are times in which I need to be out front. Right. Yeah. There are times in which I need to be in the background. Right. There are times in which I need to be supportive. There are times in which I need to hug, cry and offer words of encouragement. There are times in which I need to kick some ass. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's like that's whatever's needed in the moment. To me, being a man is all about rising to the occasion and being willing because that's that's a big one. Being willing yeah. and capable of rising to the occasion and being what's needed in that moment. And if yeah. we do that, then I think we solve hella issues that that our families and our communities and our world faces. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add one caveat to that. And okay. that one caveat is that when you rise to the moment and you think you're doing what you you're, what you're supposed to do for what's needed at that moment, give yourself the opportunity to also be wrong. Because Ooh. I think sometimes we get we put enough pressure on ourselves where everything we do has to be perfect because somebody's watching. Yes. And in reality, it's not that's not the case. Yes. Sometimes the attempt is actually way better than being perfect, than being perfect, right? And I think that that's something that we don't push enough. Like you, you see a lot of these comics or these memes when it comes to, to fathers, yo, the bar is low for us because they don't expect us to do anything, mm. right? That We all know that we could do way more than what the bar is set to do. Mm-hmm. We're going to fuck up at times. We are. That doesn't mean that you're not going, you know, head first into it and trying your best. So mm-hmm. don't, don't let, don't let people think that, um, you know, I don't want fathers to think that when you identify your triggers, you identify what triggers you, or maybe you're the trigger, um, all your actions will be perfect. Dude. It's impossible, man. You're going to have to go with the punches and learn. Like my man, Will Smith said, yo, we are work in progress, baby. That's it. <laughs> we are working for one day. We might smack our kids when we shouldn't have smacked. Them. I'm not, I'm not condoning violence against the kids, but mm-hmm. I'm just saying you might smack your kid and you mm-hmm. might look back and say, yo, I fucked up. Mm-hmm. saying i fucked up is better than saying i'm a loser dude dude and mm-hmm. i'm and i and i'll add this and i think we can kind of wrap our conversation up today i came across something the other day and it said that you didn't fail f-a-i-l you just fail f-e-l-l yeah yeah pause like and think about that you didn't fail f-a-i-l you just fail f-e-l-l and what happens if somebody fail F-E-L-L. They got to get up. Right. Yeah. So give yourself grace and space to get up. If you screw up, you make the wrong decision. Because, again, we're going to make the wrong. I'll probably make a wrong one later today. It is what it Daily. is. Daily. Daily. Yeah. 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 I'm going to give myself the grace and space <laughs> to move on from that because I didn't fail. F-A-I-L. I just fail. F-E-L-L. Yo, really dope conversation. I know y'all enjoyed it. Make sure to hit the link in the bio to go um, support my man James and his recovery in the GoFundMe link in the show notes y'all be blessed well and wise and have a merry christmas i really hope you enjoyed today's episode make sure to hit that like button subscribe and follow coach mike d everywhere on social media y'all be blessed well and wise
I, I can't, you know, you know, I, I'm known for that guy that likes to leave like a, a, a final quote or like mm -hmm. something to get the dads going. You did that for me, bro. That right there, the whole <laughs> fail and fail. I, I can't top that, bro. So all I'm going to say to the dads is, yo, you could be like me sometimes and and fail. Mm -hmm. But then you better go out, out there and try to fill that shit up with some good experiences, too, man. Make your Come presence on. felt the way it's supposed to be. We matter. Fatherhood hey. is lit. No doubt. No doubt. Y'all be blessed. Holla back. Peace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo, really dope conversation. I know y'all enjoyed it. Make sure to hit the link in the bio to go um, support my man James and his recovery in the GoFundMe link in the show notes. Y'all be blessed, well, and wise, and have a Merry Christmas. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and follow Coach Mike D everywhere on social media. Y'all be blessed, well, and wise.